G'day guys, great to be with you today. I'm actually going to talk today about one of my absolute favourite topics in the Bible. And I'm so passionate about this topic. It's being born again. Being born again in the Kingdom of God and Christianity is one of the most, if not the most, vital parts in Christianity that there is. Receiving the Lord Jesus Christ, having faith and belief in Him, and being forgiven of your sins is all part of being born again. I'm so thankful to God that I was born again. And I want to share that with other people. I want to share the, the forgiveness of the sins, the, fi the feeling of forgiveness. I want to share the love that God has bestowed upon me with other people. And I want to share Jesus Christ. I want to share his gospel. I want to share everything that he said and talked about and everything that he helps us experience through daily life. But before I can do that, we need to understand that we need to be born again. Well, what is it to be born again, you might ask? Jesus sets us a perfect example here. And he says it in John 3, uh, verse 5. And he said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, what is it to be born of the water and what is it to be born of the Spirit? Well, some people may say that to be born of the water means actual birth. The mother breaks water and then you're born, born of the water. Or another person might say to be baptized. One or the other, just get both done and then you're covered. The second part is to be born of the Spirit. What is it to be born again of the Spirit? Because that's the most important part. See, Jesus says, unless you are born of the water and of the Spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So although being born again is so illustrious and so glorious and so gratifying, it is also a very serious thing if we're not born again. And we need to take Jesus' words seriously because his words are life. Now, moving on, I want to show you an example of this in the Bible. I want to show you one of my favorite parts to use as an example of this, and it's the Apostle Peter. See, the Apostle Peter in Luke 22, verse 32, says this. He says, But I have, this is Jesus speaking, he says, But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Notice in here that Jesus actually says to Peter, When thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. So Jesus had already been walking with Peter, or Peter had been walking with Jesus for probably three years at this point. And notice that Peter was the guy that was with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane and said, Lord, even if all forsake you, I will stand by your side. I will go even to death with you. And Jesus said unto him, Peter, truly I say unto you, that before the cock crows twice, you will deny me thrice, three times. Peter couldn't believe it. But soon, he found that out to be true. He denied Jesus three times, and he was so sorrowful in his heart. But yet, Peter was the one that Jesus spoke to and said, Upon this rock I will build my church. And he also said, When thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. These are all prophetic words from Jesus to Peter, because he knew that Peter would deny him three times. He even said that. And yet we see in Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter stand up and say unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So what was the major difference between Peter denying Jesus three times to his face almost? It was literally not even that far away. And yet now, a little bit later on in the Bible, him standing up and the power and the, and the spirit of authority saying to everybody on the day of Pentecost, who knows how many people were there, I actually think it says that, but I'd have to go and check. But, and just saying, you need to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There is such a contrast in personality here, but what is it? I believe that power was the Holy Spirit. That power comes and indwells within us and gives us boldness to preach the gospel, even in the face of danger. See, that's the difference between being born again and not being born again. Between living in, in the past, living without Christ and being converted to Christianity. It gives us an internal fire that we, we thirst and after righteousness, that we want to live for God. I pray that you all become born again. I pray that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and receive him as your Lord and Savior. May God bless you all.